Hi, third grade. Today we are going to do the bonus unit, week two, day two. Let's get started with our drill sounds warm up. A, apple, a. Ah. A, safe, a. A, acorn, a. A, wash, aw. Ah. A, squash, aw. Ah. A, Alaska, a. Ah. E, ed, eh. E, Pete, E. E, me, E. I, itch, I. I, pine, I. I, hi, I. I, animal, a uh, or I. I, champion, E. O, octopus, ah. O home o o no o you up a uh. you mule you you rule u you pupil you you flew u why cry i and why baby e Nice job. Okay, next we're going to watch this video to learn our new concept for today. Here we go. Hi, boys and girls. Uh, Miss Ann here, and we're here for week two of the bonus unit. And this is the new concept we're going to do today as part of um, day two of week two of the bonus unit. So you remember we were talking a lot about prefixes. Um, on week one and you did a lot of work with prefixes that helped you with the meaning of words and we did a lot with um, looking at the meanings of like open syllable prefixes and common closed syllable prefixes as well so we'll be doing a little more of that today but we're going to add on to that today and learn something about uh, root words today so just to get started let's go over some of our common prefixes that we learned some of these were open syllables like this let's just read these real quickly re pro e d and pre you remember pre let's look up here you have these in your student notebook pre means before Let's look at some of the closed syllable ones. X, non, that's an easy one to remember. Non, remember when we add non means um, not. Miss, un, sub, remember what sub means? Under, like you can remember that from a submarine. Trans, do you remember what trans means? Trans means across or beyond. Ill, im, in, m, con, n, dis. All right, so those are our our prefixes that we've uh, worked on last week and we're going to continue to work on those today. But as I mentioned, we're going to be doing some work today with what we call Latin roots. And these are found in English words, these Latin roots, and they may seem like nonsense words when I show them to you like this, but they have meaning and they're part of a word. So we're going to look at some of these roots and then we'll look at some of the meaning of these too. All right, so let's just go through. These are all closed syllables, so I think you could read these. Tract, and I put little lines to show that something usually comes before this or after this in a word. It's not a word that can stand alone. Spec, cyst, flecked, junked. Rib, min, ject, and fract. So let's 
take a look at these in a word in a couple of words just so you get the idea of how this works. If we look over here, you see I put the word up here destruct. D is our prefix. Struct is that Latin root that we were talking about. If I take off that prefix D, is struct a word by itself? Can it stand by itself? No, it's not a word by itself. It can't stand alone. So sometimes prefixes are added to words like parts of words like that. They can't stand alone, but they have meaning. Okay. How about this word? Unclip. If I take away the un, does clip, is that a real word? Is that, can that stand alone? Yes. So sometimes prefixes are added to words that can stand alone, but it still helps us to know it's like the opposite of clip. clip. That means you unclip something, you take the clip away from it, right? Okay, so we're going to be talking mainly about these um, Latin roots because sometimes these roots are just part of the word. They're going to be added as a syllable in a word. Sometimes they're going to have a prefix. Sometimes they'll have a, a suffix. And so a Latin root is part of a word that has meaning, but usually it has a prefix or a suffix added to it. So if we look, you might need your student notebook if you have it. If you want to pause and get it. On page 43, if you do happen to have it, this has the common roots and it also has the meanings, just like we had with our prefixes on page 42. On 43, these are the common roots that um, we have in our English language. There's a lot more really in our English language, but these are some of the most common ones. And I put them up here as well so we can take a look. These are the same ones that are in your notebook. Okay. So those might help you with understanding the meaning of some of those. So if we look up struct, like in this word, struct, I see right here, struct, S-T-R-U-C-T, means build. But we know that the prefix D, you remember that one? D means the opposite. So the opposite of to build would be to take it apart, right? So when you destruct a building or destruct maybe something you made with Legos, you would be taking it apart, right? So that means to take it down, to, to destroy it or take it apart, okay? So I'm gonna move some of these and just show you a couple of those Latin roots here. Let's see if we can match some of them. You could do more of something like this at home that would help you to match the meanings of these. All right, so what we might do is go ahead and try to match a couple of these and we'll write them on our dry erase board. So if you could get your dry erase board as well or even a piece of paper, you could write some of these down and the meaning right on here. So if you need to pause and get that, that would be fine. So let's first look at the first one, fract. And if I look at my list here, or if you want to look in your student notebook, fract means break. So I would draw a line right over to there to match that. Fract means break. When you think about fracture, right? That's part of that word. Let's try the next one. Fect, F-E-C-T, fect means to make. So let's match that one. Okay, and then ject. Let's find that one on here. And let's see, ject right up here means to throw. Okay, so I have that right here. Ject means to throw. So you could make something like this at home to practice some. Let's go ahead and write some of these. Fract means break. So you could write that down. Fact, F-E-C-T, means make. Ject means, look there, throw. J-E-C-T, 
row. Okay. All right, so you can erase those. There, uh, there's a lot more, as you can see, a lot more of those root words and the meaning they will be in your notebook. And also some may come, come home in your um, home support pack that you may be able to look there about the meaning. Let's go ahead and I'm going to give you a word up here. Let's see if you can write that word and guess the meaning of it based on that Latin root. Let's try this first word. All right, I have two syllables. I have a, a um, prefix here, pre, right? So if we look at pre, means before. And uh, our root here, dipped, right here means speak. All right, so speak before. Predict means that, you know, you when you predict something's going to happen, you talk about it before it really did happen. So you're saying something will happen before it really happens. So you can see how this pre, before, and dict to speak helps us to know the meaning of that. Go ahead and write that on your board. Pre, dict. You can break it down in syllables and then go ahead and write it. Great. All right, let's try another one. Let's try this one. Con. Struct. That's a big root, isn't it? Struct. Construct. All right. Struct, remember, means to build. We saw that with destruct. Build means struct. But con, remember, con was one of our closed syllable prefixes, means with or together. So what do you think construct means? Means you're going to be building something together. You're going to be putting it together. Right? So that prefix con together with struct, which means build, means you're going to be building something, constructing something, putting it together. And we could add the suffix ing onto that as well. Go ahead and write that word. Construct. 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 and then put it underneath on the line and we scoop it, construct. Great, so there's lots of possibilities of prefixes and Latin roots that could go together or prefixes with regular standalone words that could happen. So you'll be able to work with those in the next few days. We'll be putting some of those together for some more practice. If you do have your student notebook, you'll notice at the bottom here is a place to add an example. So an example of a prefix plus a root word would be predict. That was one of the ones we just talked about. So you could um, put that example in there, right next to it, right again, and then you could put destruct down here. You could put that right next to that as well. You could also add a suffix to that for predict. You could add predicting or predicted. So when you go ahead and write that word again, add a suffix to that. Destruct, we could say destructed and put an ed suffix on that. Or destructing, put the ing suffix onto that. So go ahead and write those in if you do have your student notebook. If not, you could just try them on a piece of paper. All right, thanks very much, boys and girls. See you next time. Okay, the final thing we're going to do in Foundations today is a quick dictation dry erase. So if you don't have your board, just get a piece of paper and pencil, but otherwise you need marker, eraser, and your dry erase board. 
take a second and get all of those materials so we can practice. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is dictate three different prefixes. So um, actually, since you have these three boxes on your slate, use these, okay? And all you're doing is spelling them. You are not marking prefixes or the Latin roots when I give you those, okay? The first prefix I want you to write, and if you don't know, page 43 in your student notebook is a really good cheat sheet for you to use for this. Write the prefix trans. Say it. Trans. It means across. So a transcontinental flight goes across continents. Trans. All right. Let's see how you did. Can you spell it with me? Go. T-R-A-N-S. Great. All right, move over to the next box. The next prefix is pre. Say it. Pre. Pre means before. If you preheat an oven, you heat it up before you put something in it. Pre. All right, let's spell that one. Go. P-R-E. Very good. And then the last prefix is dis. Say it. Dis. If you disrespect somebody, then you're doing the opposite. You're not respecting them. Dis. All right, spell that one. D-I-S. Great work. Okay, erase those. And if you're using your slate, the next thing I'm going to do is give you six Latin roots. So that's kind of our new concept for today. Six Latin roots. I would suggest, you know, quickly numbering your slate somewhat like this, not spending a whole lot of time, be efficient, and number those up and get ready for your first Latin root. Fract. Say it. Fract. Fract means to break. So if you think of the word fraction in math. That's when you break apart the whole, right, into equal parts, fract. Or if you fracture a bone, you break your bone. All right, let's spell fract together. F-R-A-C-T, fract. Excellent. Try this one. Ject. Say it. Ject. Ject. Ject is a root that means throw. So if you're ejected from a game, you get a technical foul, you could be thrown out. Okay, ject. Number three. Mm, let's try junked. Say it. Junked. J a Mm, that's a kind of a crazy blend there. Junked. See if you can get all of the sounds. Junked means join. So um, when roads come together, we call that an intersection or also sometimes a junction. So like by the sheets in Greensburg, um, when you have the tunnel over there, there's a lot of roads coming together and a lot of different ways to go. That's a junction. So when roads are coming together, when they're joined, as a driver, when you approach a junction, you should slow down and use, um, be alert, use caution. All right, how did we spell junked? Let's try. This was tricky. J-U-N-C-T, junked. Good job. Let's try another one. Duct, say it. Duct. Spell it. You do not mark these roots. Just spell it. Duct means to lead or guide. So if you think of a conductor, 
um, whether it be a train conductor or a music conductor or a band conductor, whoever is conducting, they are leading or guiding. Duct. All right, let's spell it. Go with me. D-U-C-T. Great work. Okay, two more pre or sorry, these aren't prefixes. These are Latin roots. Two more Latin roots. Let's do men. Say it. Men. Men. Men, if you look on page 43, means small. Men. I'm thinking of the word miniature. If something's miniature, it's very small. All right, how do we spell men? That one's easy. M-I-N, right. I think that's the easiest. And then let's just do one more. Fact. Say it. Fact. That Latin root means to make. To make. Fact. So if you get infected with something, you are someone made you sick to make. Okay, let's spell fact, go. F-E-C-T, very good. All right, erase those six Latin roots. And the next thing I'm going to give you or do, we'll do one word at a time. It's very important that you're practicing these multisyllabic words. We're going to use this um, line to write your word and then mark it. Your first word is unsafe. Say it, unsafe. Think you should hear a prefix at the beginning, unsafe. All right, when you're ready, hit play. Let's check spelling first and then we'll do our marking. Un, what's the prefix? U-N. And then base word is safe. Say it. Let's spell it. S-A-F-E. Now when we mark it, hopefully you heard the syllables. Un, safe. Un is what kind? Closed. Put the short vowel breath. Safe, look at the pattern. What is it? Vowel dash E, right. Long vowel, silent E. Unsafe. Good job. All right, erase unsafe. And let's do our next word. Um, hmm, let's try this one. It's plural. And this one actually has two suffixes at the end that need to be circled when you're writing this word or marking this word. The word is Lock, locker, lockers. When you go to the middle school, you will use lockers to store your belongings. Lock, locker, lockers. Hear how there's two suffixes? All right, let's check your spelling. Ready? Lock, spell it. L-O-C-K. Hopefully you use the digraph C-K after a short vowel, right? Er, E-R is our first suffix. And S, to make it plural, is our second suffix. Good job. Now we just need to basically scoop lock and say what kind of syllable is it? It is closed, right? Lockers. Good. Erase lockers. And your third word is going to be inspect, and then it has a suffix, inspecting. All right, try it. Inspecting. I will be inspecting your desks for cleanliness. Inspect. Hopefully you hear the prefix. And now we know that spect isn't a word, it's a what? Latin root, right? Inspecting. 
I already did some of the marking. I got I got too excited. Okay, so let's check, see. In, what's our prefix? I-N, right? Spect, did you spell it? S-P-E-C-T, inspect, and then you all know I-N-G to circle that suffix. In is closed, right? We're going to put the brev. Spect is also closed. We'll put the brev again. And hopefully you have ing circled for the suffix. Inspecting. Good job. All right. Erase that one. I have another one for you. Listen to the syllables, though. Impolite. What's the word? Impolite. I hope you are never impolite at home or at school. Impolite. All right, when you're ready, let's check our spelling. M, how'd you do with the, that's a prefix. I am, right. Po, P-O, and then light, L-I-T-E. Now let's see if you can beat me to it. M is what kind of syllable? Close, short vowel. Po, go. Open, long vowel. Light. This is a vowel consonant E, and hopefully you remembered macron over that long vowel. Cross off silent E. Impolite. Very good. Are we ready for the last one? Okay. Predict, predicted in the past. There's a suffix. Predicted. The weatherman predicted a snowstorm. Pre. Now we know this is a Latin root. We talked about that. Predict, predicted. All right, we ready for the reveal for spelling? All right, spell the prefix. Pre, go. P-R-E. Spell the Latin root. Dict means to say or speak. D-I-C-T. Good. And then did you circle... E-D, the suffix. All right, try to beat me to it. Pre, what kind? Open. Dict, what kind? Close. Good job with a short vowel. Excellent. Predicted. All right, erase up your slates, and we have one sentence today. All right, here we go, the grand finale. Here's the sentence. The man was... The man was the man was instruct instructing another word for teaching. The man was instruct. There's a Latin root. Instruct instructing. That's a long word. Stretch it. In St, stir, it's a three letter blend. Struct, act, ing. Instruct, ing. Whew, that's a long one. That took up almost a whole line there. The man was instructing the wild class. The man was instructing the wild class. Please check. Punctuation at the end, capitalization, and then we'll kind of scoop it together here in a minute. Okay, let's reveal and make sure our spelling is okay. You ready? I'm not so nervous about the man was. I'm really hoping we have those words spelled correctly. I am more nervous about this long word here, in, I-N, struct, S-T-R-U-C-T, and then I-N-G, instructing. The man was instructing the, how do we do with wild, I-L-D, uh-huh, class. Did you remember to put a bonus S there? Very good. 
Okay, so when we go to scoop this into meaningful, meaningful phrases, what are you thinking? The man, oh, I'm saying it out loud. It's because my cap's stuck. Gah, there we go. The man was instructing the wild class. I think I kind of just gave mine away because when I read it out loud, that's how I get my scoops. The man was instructing the wild class. I picked three. Maybe some of you did, the man was instructing the wild class. Maybe you did two scoops. Hopefully, though, it sounds natural. All right, third grade, that's all I have for you today. Nice work, and I'll see you next time.